my big fear was that people would go, oh, not another Carmen, because there are so many around in different media, films, uh, ballets, the opera, obviously, uh, and various, various versions of it in all different forms, and I just thought, I can't do another one. Um, funnily enough, the thing that made me decide to do it in the end was to tell my own story to the music of the opera. And I also wanted to do a thriller. I'm a big fan of Hitchcock and other film noir thriller movies. And I thought it'd be nice to do something that had a few surprises in it and a few twists and turns along the way. So I thought, you can't do that with a story that people already know. I didn't want to call it Carmen because I'm, I don't want people to think they're seeing the opera when they're not. So by changing it to The Carman, I thought it was in, enough of a change for people to know that it wasn't the opera, that it was different, but also that it had links with the opera, it was the music. That I didn't want to lose that, so it's sort of a, quite a nice compromise. It is all Carmen music, bar one or two pieces, which are actually from the Shedrin score, which are other pieces of Bizet. We didn't use the Shedrin music as a whole, we mixed them up, so it's quite difficult to tell when one ends and then the next one begins. It does sound very filmic, it does sound like a film score, and it certainly was created in that way. And I think often in films, I mean, in a show such as ours, you only have the music, they're not speaking, but I think in, in some films it can, it can change completely the atmosphere of what's going on for the performers, and you take the music away and you don't realise how much it's actually giving to the piece when you're dealing with movement and dance and all these things. It gives you the emotion, it tells you the emotion, so it's much more important to us than it would be to an actor who was speaking or acting in that way. Many of the films I was looking at were early Visconti films. The very first version of The Postman Always Rings Twice is called A Sessione, which was a Visconti film, uh, made around the same time as the Lana Turner, a more famous version which is a famously American story of a wife with her older husband who gets seduced by this newcomer into town. But what impressed me was it was very earthy, very dirty, very real characters. I was impressed by the fact the man had a hairy back, which was very odd for the 1940s, I think. Those kind of little details I really went for. And I thought, well, this would be nice to do something that, that was this earthy and not glossy and Hollywood. I've updated the storyline to around, I think, around 1960. I've also not gone with the idea of setting it in Spain, but I wanted it to be European in feeling. I didn't want it to have a Hollywood feel. So I thought what I could do, America is made up from such a lot of uh, nationalities and communities, that I thought uh, an Italian-American community would, would hit on it just right for me. The characters themselves, the dancers really have to identify with. They all had to write their character histories, as an actor would actually, probably rehearsing a play. The character of Carmen herself, I think in my piece, could be a man or a woman. There are two characters that are very like Carmen. Um, the Don Jose character comes out in a different male character called Angelo. Um, and the character of Michaela in the opera, Angelo's girlfriend, is paralleled by Rita. And although not strictly following the storyline by any means, there are similarities with those characters, I think, that people will get who know the opera. With the characters of Angelo and Luca, I wanted to surprise people with their relationship. We set Luca up as a conventional sort of macho man when he arrives. He's the James Dean, Marlon Brando type. 
He seduces the wife of the garage owner. But then suddenly, it turns out that he's also seducing the young, shy, garage or job man. To a modern audience, it's not that much of a surprise that a man can be bisexual and can be attracted to a man and a woman, but it, it's, it's what we're all used to expecting in dance. You know, there's a heroine, there's a hero, all those sort of things. And then also if you set him up in that way, the audience uh, are feeling comfortable and um, they're thinking, oh, is this is it, this is it, I know this story. I've seen this story before, I know what's gonna happen. And then it doesn't happen. And that's good in storytelling terms to surprise people in that way. The sort of work I'm doing is a bit difficult to categorize. A lot of people say, is it dance? And it opens up discussion as to what is dance. But I think any movement set to counts to the music is dance. A lot of people would argue with me with that. They would say that certain forms of gestural movement or natural movement or social dance isn't real serious dance. But I mix all those things together. Yeah.